Today marks the beginning of a historic hearing in the top court. A five-judge bench begins hearing a batch of pleas that seek to scrap the archaic 150-year-old Section 377, which criminalizes homosexuality. This comes as a fresh ray of hope for the LGBTQ community. The top court today has asked the Modi government to spell out its stand on Section 377. Right from the former Attorney General Mukul Rothagi to eminent senior lawyers as Arvind Datar, all were at hand today assailing these provisions. Meanwhile, the petitioners also expressed a lot of hope uh, that uh, they are uh, completely full of enthusiasm given the fact that the Supreme Court's constitution bench is convening uh, in the backdrop of the privacy judgment to reconsider its earlier verdict which had restored the penal provisions of 377. Five years earlier, in 2013, the Supreme Court had overturned a Delhi High Court judgment criminalizing consensual sex between two consenting adults of the same sex. We are hopeful that the court will uh, overturn its 2013 judgment where uh, it had uh, considered many of us as a minuscule minority as if our fundamental rights which are envisaged in our constitution and are protected in our constitution. I am feeling very optimistic that the judgment will finally realize what it has denied us for the last 15 years and more. Uh, we have uh, argued uh, how 377 has impacted our lives uh, both uh, personally and professionally and has uh, denied us uh, many of the fundamental rights. As arguments over whether Section 377 should be quashed or not continue in the Apex Court, Mirror now asks, should sexual freedom be a fundamental right? Let's debate. Watching the Urban Debate in Miranam Fede Souza, thank you for joining us. It's a very interesting evening tonight here on the channel to begin with Section 377 being brought up in our Supreme Court. Basic fundamental rights that should be given to every single Indian irrespective of their sexual orientation. So the question we have to ask tonight is very, very simple. And it's this. The Indian Psychiatric Society put up this notice a few days ago that said basically homosexuality is not a psychiatric disorder. It's a normal variant of human sexuality. There is no scientific evidence that sexual orientation can be altered by treatment. In fact, such attempts will lead to low self-esteem and stigmatization of the person. So here's the question. If it's innate, if your sexual orientation is innate, you're just born with it. Is it fair to outlaw? It's like being left-handed. Is it fair to have a law in our country that outlaws being left-handed? Wouldn't that make left-handed people miserable? Doesn't everyone deserve the same rights? Secondly, if we have a fundamental law to privacy or fundamental right to privacy, is it fair then to look into someone's bedroom and decide whether or not they're living their life as per your rules, doesn't a fundamental right to privacy guarantee each and every one of us the right to choose our sexual orientation? Isn't it time India as a country completely crushed Section 377 and treated every single Indian the same, irrespective of how they chose to love and how they choose to live? Joining me on the show today, Anila Singh, spokesperson of the BJP, Jerry Johnson, human rights activist, Harish Ayer is an LGBTQ rights activist, Surjit Yadav, spokesperson of the Hindu Sena, Anvish is a petitioner and a, an IIT alumni, so is Akhilesh, uh, also a petitioner in this particular case, Anand Grover, senior advocate with the Supreme Court and Sushant uh, Divigar is an actor and a performer. I welcome all of you to the show. Thank you so much. I'm going to start with Mr. Anand Grover. Mr. Grover, thank you so much for giving us your time. Um, it's a very interesting case. If you would please uh, be kind enough to give my audience a perspective of, you know, the arguments you're putting before the court today in this case and why you believe that 377 should be removed completely. Well, actually, uh, first of all, you have to understand that NAS Foundation in the Delhi High Court had ruled that 377 between consenting adults is actually in uh, 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 being criminalized is in violation of fundamental rights. So they read it down, said that consenting adults in private can do whatever they want. That was set aside by the Supreme Court in caution. Now, between then and now, 
what has happened is the privacy judgment. The privacy judgment has categorically stated that what you do in your bedroom is your private space. The state cannot intrude into it. They have not gone into whether it's natural or not. That issue itself is up to you. The state cannot touch you on that. It's there between you. The state cannot intrude into that space. So you don't have to go into the question whether it's natural or unnatural. Uh, there are there are disputes about that, but we don't have to go into it. Mm -hmm. Whatever sexual uh, sexuality issues, sexual practices, your choice of partners are entirely the individual's decision. The state cannot do anything. Who you marry, etc., etc. Now, the reason why it's a foregone conclusion because Puttu Swami, the privacy judgment, has already knocked the bottom out of Kaushal, the Supreme Court judgment, and they have set up this bench to find out whether there are people who are saying yes it is wrong and whether other people are saying it's not wrong. According to me once the privacy judgment has been given there is very little for us to argue and that's exactly what has happened. Today the judges heard two lawyers, tomorrow they'll hear a few other lawyers but basically it's all decided in terms of law. So I don't think we have to wait very long. Uh, before the Chief Justice retires we'll have a judgment saying that 377 now is out of our statute book and the judgment of NAS Foundation will be restored. I'm sorry I have to leave in 20 minutes because yes. I have a lot of work for tomorrow. Yes, I, I do understand and uh, again I really appreciate your time Mr. Grover. Quick question, the government of India uh, has not yet put forward its stand before the Supreme Court has it or has there been any response from the government so far? No. No, the government, well, you see, it depends. The government doesn't change because of Congress or BJP, UP or NDA. As far as the government stand is concerned, they took a stand in the Delhi High Court. There were two variant stands. The Ministry of Home opposed us. The Ministry of Health supported us. Then the judgment was rendered in our favor. In the Supreme Court, they supported us. They did not file an appeal against the NAS Foundation judgment of the High Court. And then when Kaushal was delivered, the government of India filed a review, okay? Mm -hmm. So their stand is clear. Now if this government, uh, government changes its mind now, they'll have a lot of explaining to do. Party politics doesn't change a constitutional stand in a court of law. And, uh, Mr. Grover, obviously uh, you do have a lot Hello? to do because you're going to be arguing this case again tomorrow. Um, but for all of the people who are watching tonight, even those who are on the panel, there are petitioners, there are people who are watching whose lives will be changed by this hearing and by the judgment from the Supreme Court. What message do you have to give them? You seem to be confident that the result is uh, you know, inevitable. It's not inevitable. There is always 1% chance. But I'm, I'm telling you, the intervening factor of the Putri Swami judgment actually knocked the bottom out of the the cautious judgment now if there are any other arguments on that like on the issue of equality under article 14 15 etc those can be argued but Puttu Swami has already said that Kaushal has decided at least two three issues wrongly one is the privacy issue the other is saying that a minuscule minority cannot actually uphold its right which is wrong so the, the, it's practically overturned already. It's a formality according to me and the court has to give a verdict on the arguments made in the court. But I don't see any other choice except that the court saying that Kaushal was wrong and Nas Foundation was correct. And I can tell you 99% of the lawyers, both sides will tell you honestly that is the only thing that they'll do. Well, uh, so very confident Anand Grover, uh, senior advocate with the Supreme Court, who's arguing this case before the court, saying that uh, there is no, there's, there's perhaps a 1% chance, but in all likelihood, it will go in the favor of the petitioners. Anila Singh of the BJP joins us as well. Anila Singh, the government uh, has not so far put forward its stand in this particular case, although it has in previous cases. Uh, would you be able to tell us what the official stand of the government is or of the party? Uh, uh, I can't tell you the official stand. The mm. uh, the person who is responsible for it is going to give that uh, official stand. But I can tell you what Bharatiya Janata Party thinks of. 
uh, we very well know that two senior leaders of Bharatiya Janata Party, say Arun Jaitley ji and Harshvardhan ji, their stand was very, very clear right from the beginning. Their statements, we know that Arun Jaitley ji had said that Supreme Court should not have reversed the high, Delhi High Court order, which decriminalized consensual sex between gay adults. And similarly, Harshvardhan ji had said that everybody has human rights no, and it is the government's job to protect them. So our stand is clear and we definitely stand with the humanity and humanity says that uh, everybody has uh, has choice to choose their uh, partners to have uh, sex with so uh, definitely i am pretty sure that uh, whatever the judgment will be given by supreme court it will be in the favor of humanity like uh, if you talk about uh, criminalization of uh, uh, 377 like it happened in 1860 so we can't say this uh, that uh, this practice uh, was very unfamiliar in our uh, country in uh, in ancient India or medieval India. So definitely, it is the high time that we should rethink and uh, we should uh, make changes in the law accordingly. All right, I, I do understand that Mr. Anand Grover needs to leave. Mr. Grover, I uh, like I said, I appreciate the time you've given us, uh, and I thank you for your time. I'm not going to hold you back because I know you have a day of court to prepare for, and it's an important day because it's an important day for all of us. Uh, yes, thank you. We should, we should give him, we should give him his time. But uh, I just want to react to what uh, Anila Singh said. This, uh, this is heartening, and uh, let's just take it from the fact that if the government has changed its stance and is is working with the LGBT community. This is a great place to be, Jerry. Oh, I think it's fantastic. Um, but again, as Anand Grover said, you know, it's again, it's irrelevant now, the huh. BJP stand. So yes. I in a way, it's kind of like, okay, you're now catching on to the tune of the country, to the tune of the world. So, well, welcome on board. Yeah. But we are already up there. But um, it's not like your party internally has some consistency. So it's when it's convenient, you quote one party leader. When it's convenient, you quote the other one with an opposite point of view. But regardless, I think as Anand Grover said, the court has realized mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, it's, it's path forward. And I think mm -hmm. it's only a matter of formality where 377 gets read down or it gets repealed completely. But, you know, what you're saying is absolutely right because it was on our screen a little while ago. Subramani Swami, who was a member of parliament with the BJP, said uh, that g being gay is a genetic handicap. Right. Uh, which, which was an atrocious thing well, to say. Exactly, right. But then there are some people who still live in Neanderthal times and <laughs> maybe are not updated with what's new in science and what's new in uh, progressive <laughs> thought. So we have to let them be where they are and let the ones who want to join us on the march ahead come along. Well, uh, let me bring in the other voices uh, that are with us right now. Surjit Yadav is a spokesperson for the Hindu Sena. Surjit Yadav ji, thank you for joining us. Uh, Mr. Yadav, you have heard what Anila Singh ne kah, kya kaha. She said that uh, you know, the BJP stands with the LGBT community. It's a <coughs> private right to choose. Uh, will the Hindu Sena stand with the LGBT community as well? Look, I don't have a right to give anyone in a bedroom. लेकिन धार्मिक रूप से हिंदुओं के धार्मिक रूप से मुस्लिम धार्मिक रूप से और अन्य धर्मों के उसमें इसको आप आ, हम निगल नहीं सकते हमारे परिवार में अगर कोई ऐसा होता है देखिए किसी के आप बेडरूम में कोई दो पर्सन क्या कर रहे हैं आपस में जब तक एक कंप्लेंट नहीं करता पुलिस कुछ नहीं कर सकती पुलिस जबरदस्ती जाकर नहीं कह सकती तुमने ऐसा किया वो कह देंगे हमने नहीं किया कोई कानून नहीं बनता मैडम कोई कानून नहीं बनता लेकिन सामाजिक रूप से हम इसको एक्सेप्ट नहीं कर पाते धार्मिक रूप से इसको एक्सेप्ट नहीं कर पाते इस्लाम में तो इसकी सजा मौत है जी हम क्या कर सकते हैं उसको हम नहीं कह रहे लेकिन आज 25-30 परसेंट आज के दिन इंडिया में मुस्लिम आबादी है लेकिन इसको निंगल पाना आसान नहीं है क्योंकि हम ऐसे समाज में रहे हैं जहां इसकी परमिशन नहीं दी जा सकती और अब तो ठीक है जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट कह रहा है उसके आगे तो मैडम क्या कह सकते हैं पर हाँ थोड़ा समझने में कि सामाजिक रूप से इसको किस प्रकार समाज के सभी तबके को इसको एक्सेप्ट करने के लिए ऐसा नहीं दिखता समाज एक्सेप्ट नहीं कर पा रहा है इसको देखिए बात ये है सुशांत इज गोइंग टू रिस्पॉन्ड सुशांत क्यों है Uh, you know, I just would like to respond to this uh, uh, by saying that you know, popular morality 
can never trump constitutional morality and we are a democracy so this whole debate about uh, you know people will not understand and society will but you know if you don't make an effort to understand that these are basic human rights that every individual of this country should be given that's the end of it why should you put uh, this and that and the other dimensions which is going to complicate it for yourself to understand it is so simple we are just one race and that is humanity why can't we understand this much so when these people uh, you know uh, uh, sort of complicated for it themselves then i feel bad for them you know it's it's really not that difficult and it's a matter of uh, equal rights we are not asking again as i say we are not asking for special rights we are not asking for uh, you know uh, special um, concessions or something like that we just want equal rights i don't see how difficult this is to understand you know you know but i do think that mr sujit yadav made a very very important point and in with, with the permission of my panel i'd like to move towards that point he said of course what the supreme court decides will be final and we will all have to listen and we'll have to follow what the supreme court decides but he said how are we going to deal with it as a society as a family if someone among our families turns out to be gay how do we deal with it how do we make ourselves okay with those around us and that is the real question because like mr androva told us it's a given yes. it's almost a given but what happens after that how do we make sure that we are able to live together go ahead um i think fa see you bring up a very critical yeah. point and there are two approaches that i can at least recommend from the top of my head one is what you started this show out by saying the indian psychiatric association has pointed out that this is not a mental health issue it is not a mental disorder in fact the only reason it comes under the mental purview of counselors is because of society's response to it and therefore kind of making it an issue um for a lot of people to struggle with so that's one so i think a lot of people need to come come to terms with the fact that this is not a mental issue with the with the individual but with mm -hmm. society and so we need to change the society around the individual point number 2 is 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 something that um, i've actually co-authored a book on this front and it talks about india's historic comfort historic and ancient comfort with queer identities with queer sexualities throughout all of its history throughout all of its mythology yeah. if you look at the, the religions the books um right from jainism and hinduism and sikhism um all of these religions have talked about the diversity that's inherent in our nature inherent in the observable world yes. and they have written it in the scriptures they've codified it in in the temple architectures they've mm. they've codified it in rituals mm. So these are all part of our culture, and yes. somewhere along the lines, we have actually abandoned that yes. and put in place this Victorian uh, prudish kind of mindset yeah. that Section mm. three seventy seven represents. So in fact, it's actually going yeah. back to what we were. In fact, in fact, That's you know, I we... want to say this out loud, and a lot of people think that I'm not uh, vocal enough about things like this. Uh, let me let me be, make this very very clear. Criminalizing or demonizing homosexuality is a fundamentally Christian idea, and I think it is a wrong, wrong, wrong idea. Wherever it came from, and we know from tracing history that it came from the British Raj. It came from their concepts. It came from their, uh, you know, ideas yes. of morality and religion. It's it's Christian and it's Catholic, and I believe that it is wrong. And I don't believe, as a country, that we should follow whatever. you know some other culture left behind and indeed and in, and in fact there are so many books out in the market if you just do a little google search about them know, about been... indian history and indian mythology yes. that talk about queer diversity that talk about lgbt diversity oh, we've had observed in nature observed in society acknowledged if not yes. celebrated at L least acknowledged yes let me bring in uh, let me bring in akilesh and uh, avnish to join us akilesh uh, both of them are in the noida studio the petitioners in this particular case uh, akilesh i'll start with you and i want you know i i, I want you to particularly address what mr surjit yadav said he said how do we deal with this in our daily lives how will society you know sort of uh, live alongside a world that accepts homosexuality what's your answer to that So I think this is a great start. A uh, great start because uh, if if the law itself criminalizes an identity in itself, the society around it would be built around the law that has been created. And once we strike that down, that's 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 a positive move towards moving to an ideal situation where everyone is accepting. So now the second point I would like to make is that uh, the reason for filing our petition, as you know, we are twenty LGBT IIT petitioners, is that. uh we exist everywhere including the iits <laughs> and we wanted the court to acknowledge the world around to acknowledge that we we are in all fields of 
uh, of the society around us and uh, that we are not limited to you know there is nothing wrong about being flamboyant or anything but that all of us are in different walks of life probably not as visible and loud but we do exist so once people start realizing this that you know this is an innate thing that is natural and i think society changing the society's mindset happens over time and i think we are progressing there and it is very uh, uh, like it has been pointed out that uh, you know it was uh, that it is it comes from uh, religion and all of that but uh, our indian culture has been very accepting as uh, been pointed out by other panelists as well so i think we are moving there I'd well, like let me, let me a couple of points here. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, go, go ahead. ahead. So, yeah, I'd like to add a couple of points. Yes, Avni. One is regarding how can the society accept this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one is regarding how can the society accept this? I'm glad that the pa other panelists have distinguished the uh, morality and legality aspect of this. They're fine with accepting this legally, but they're talking about society accepting this morally. And I think society is not there yet, Indian society probably, because their, ide their idea of homosexuality or queerness is built on misconceptions. And like someone pointed out already, uh, the Indian Psychiatry Society printing, uh, pointing out that this is not an illness is a good step in saying that, you know, uh, in clearing out this misconception that these people are not different or uh, these people are not uh, disease i mean uh, they, they don't have a disease so it is a good step in going towards uh, building a society which is more accepting towards this and how can a family accept this regarding that again like akhilesh said we are a bunch of uh, iitns that have filed the petitions and all of us are quite young and i think what our objective when we filed the petition was that uh, we wanted to tell the world tell the world through the court that uh, we have suffered yes. because of section 377 but we have received but we have uh, been able to receive acceptance in some sense uh, for a lot of us we have received acceptance from our families and uh, friends and so yeah we would like to tell the world that this is possible uh, that you know uh, to uh, to receive family acceptance and just just to just to add to Invasion's point, I guess uh, we all of us are acknowledging the privilege that we have that you know that we are coming out right here to say that we are queer and we would like everyone to be at a stage. So how is society going to accept this way? Right, right. You know, let me take this back to Surjit Yadav and Anila Singh. Surjit Yadav, पहले आपसे बात करनी थी. आपने अभी भी सुना कि अखिलेश और अनवेश ने क्या कहा दोनों IIT के graduates हैं, engineers हैं. उनका कहना है कि because of this, you know, the criminalization under section 377, they suffered greatly. They suffered psychologically. They suffered embarrassment. They suffered, they were afraid to be who they were. क्या आपको लगता है कि ऐसे धीरे-धीरे, छोटे-छोटे कदम लेके हम सब साथ में रह सकते हैं? मैंने सबसे पहले तो ये अभी अनवेश जी ने बोला कि इन्हें सफर करा 377. 377 के कारण किसी को सफर नहीं करना पड़ता. ये अगर कुछ भी कर रहे हैं तो रोड साइड पे नहीं कर रहे ये अपने बेडरूम में कर रहे हैं तो उसके लिए सफर कैसे कर सकता है कोई कोई कंप्लेनेंट नहीं है कोई कंप्लेनेंट नहीं है ना जो आपका कोई कंप्लेनेंट लेकर आप हमारे कोर आइडेंटिटी को क्रिमिनलाइज कर रहे हैं कंप्लेनेंट नहीं है भाई अगर कंप्लेनेंट नहीं let him finish. I am not saying that you have no opportunity. No opportunity. You have to do anything on the road. You have to go on the road. You have to go on the road. No, I would like to say that the society is not ready to accept gay people. So you have yourself pointed out that the society is not ready to accept gay people. We are all joking at the same time. One second, one second, one second. Yadav ji, Yadav ji, absolutely ji. Let me let me bring in Harish Ayer who hasn't spoken so far. And it's a very simple question. Yadav ji, aap bhi ek baar soch lije. If there are two people who come to you with a job application, one of them is obviously gay. Would you give that person a job? Given the fact that 377 criminalizes act, uh, homosexuality, would you give that person a job? That's the question. And answer the question, Harish Ayer, if Mr. Yadav is saying that nobody barges into your bedroom, how could you have possibly suffered? 
<laughs> that's uh, that's a little absurd because when you have a law of this kind, there are there are umpteen number of cases. There is police extortion. People have been extorted uh, money. Uh, there have been families who have been quoting this judgment and saying that I don't accept you because you are anyways illegal. See that the law is also against you. So you so so when you have a law which is which is which criminalizes. Uh, consenting adults' uh, sexual behavior. I think uh, I think it's it's basically set, sets off a trend for everything else. And Fay, I need to make a very interesting observation. We, you and I have been have had this debate for quite some time, and we have seen how agitated and how illogical the 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 side because it's always been an advocacy show and it's not been uh, any other show. But today. Um, uh, I would like to congratulate the BJP spokesperson and also um, Mr. Yadav. For, yes. They have softened their stance. They have. They are willing to listen. Okay, mm. whether whether it is because they understand that the verdict is going to be positive in LGBT in in favor of LGBT people or not, but they are willing to listen. And this is how society progresses. Yadav ji, आपको ये पता होना चाहिए. कि आज जो आप शांतता के साथ हमारी बातें सुन रहे हो इस तरीके से और भी लोग सुनेंगे इस तरीके से हमारा समाज बदलेगा और इस समाज को बदलने में शुरुआत आपने की है सो थैंक यू फॉर लिसनिंग टू अस एंड आई एम श्योर भले आपके आपके मन में ये लगता होगा कि हम अनैचुरल हैं और हम गलत हैं एंड एवरीथिंग हम प्यार से अगर बढ़ेंगे तो हम इसी तरीके से अगर बात करेंगे तो आप भी हमें जान पाओगे और हम भी आपको जान पाएंगे Well, that's actually very beautifully said, and Anila Singh has been listening very carefully up till now. Anila Singh, here's the question: uh, You know, on one hand, it's and, and I'll go back to the two petitioners about the suffering that they referred to, but it is really about moving forward. Do you believe, Anila, that the government will have a role to play post this hearing in sort of harmonising society, allowing people to understand, uh, you know, the LGBT community, helping people live and work together? Absolutely, fair. The ruling government. It is a moral responsibility uh, responsibility of any ruling government that whatever judgment is being given by the court, they have to assure that it is being implemented properly in the society. But coming back to Mr. Ayer, Mr. Ayer said that perhaps BJP stand is has softened because they know that uh, what verdict will be given by Supreme Court. So I just want to mention uh, here one thing, Mr. Ayer. In J January also, I was on the panel with the Fay. At that time also, my stand was this only because BJP is very clear that whatever the verdict will be given by Supreme Court, we are standing with it. And BJP is not uh, an orthodox party. We Thank are an enough. evolving party. We are uh, we stand very strongly with the changes. Our uh, and uh, uh, secondly. Uh, Fay, I just want to say a couple of things to Mr. Yadav in Hindi. Uh, Yadav ji, uh, with due respect, you have spoken about the society here. I want to say two things here. The society is made by us, from me and you. If we have our families, if we have our children, if we have this kind of pravrti, then if we have our hands on them, तो समाज में चाहे वो हमारे पड़ोसी हो चाहे वो हमारे रिश्तेदार हो किसी की हिम्मत नहीं होगी कुछ बोलने की सबसे पहले जो आपकी खुद का परिवार होता है उसको स्ट्रांगली खड़ा होना होता है उस व्यक्ति के साथ और दूसरी एक बात और कहना चाहूंगी कि मैं महिलाओं के इश्यूज के साथ हमेशा खड़ी रहती हूँ फे दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट विच आई एम गोइंग टू से राइट नाउ इन आर सोसाइटी बिकॉज इट इज अ टैबू बींग गे और लिस्बिन इज अ टैबू स्पेशली इफ यू टॉक अबाउट बींग गे There are many marriages. Yadav ji, kitni sari shadiya hai jahan par jo male partner hota hai, wo gay hota hai, par samaj ke pressure ki wajah se wo shadi karta hai. Us mahila, us patni ke baare mein sochiye, jo vayvayik jivan mein to ban jati hai, parantu jo uska adhikar hota hai, ek patni ke roop mein ek sharaarik santushti dene ka jo pati ka ek karta bhi hota hai, wo usko nahi mil pata hai. Parantu samaj ki wajah se, kyunki uske paas koi aur rasta nahi hota hai jaane ke liye, wo us shadi शादी के बंधन में बंधी रहती है तो दोनों ही बहुत दुखी होते हैं पर बंधन में बंधे रहते हैं बट इफ सेक्शन 377 सेक्शन 377 इज स्ट्राइक डाउन बाय सुप्रीम कोर्ट और व्हाटएवर द चेंजेस आर बीइंग ब्रॉट इन इट पॉजिटिव चेंजेस आई एम प्रेटी श्योर सच मैरिजेस विल बी एंडेड एंड एट लीस्ट पीपल विल हैव चॉइस टू चूज देयर सेक्स पार्टनर्स टू लिव विद टू मैरी विद और व्हाटएवर दे वांट टू डू विद देम
We're already talking well, about Anila Singh has made me redundant on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> Very little left for me to say. I am. Yes, I, I mean, give her an award. <laughs> yes, we should give her an I award. Find. You should give her. Give her an award. <laughs> give her the. Give her the last monologue. Give her an award. <laughs> <It's> fantastic. <laughs> I want to. Well, I want to take this back to Sujit Yadav. And, and a big hug. We all thank big her. Big hug. <laughs> Sujit Yadav ji, आपने सुना अनिला सिंह का क्या कहना है? आपका कोई रिस्पांस? You have a new fan. ये देखिए समाज में कोई व्यक्ति किसी के साथ क्या करता है उसको दूसरे किसी से मतलब नहीं होता मेरे को भी ये लोग क्या करते हैं मेरे को किसी से कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है जब ये हमारे घर में आती है ना तो देखिए मैं आपको सीधी बोल, बोलता हूँ मेरे को कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है मैं चौ, चौक पे जब ये लोग कोई मिलते हैं ना मांगने वाले मैं उनसे आशीर्वाद लेता हूँ ये हमारे धर्म में आशीर्वाद ये इंसान से ऊपर है मैं आपको आज बता देता हूं सामान्य पुरुष से ऊपर माना जाता है और इनसे आशीर्वाद लिया जाता है किसी किसी से लेकिन आप समझने की कोशिश कीजिए इसको निंगला नहीं जा सकता आराम से प्रॉब्लम है समाज की एक प्रॉब्लम है मेरे को इनसे किसी से दुश्मनी नहीं ये क्या करते हैं इनकी प्रॉपर्टी इनका शरीर इनकी प्रॉपर्टी है ये खाते हैं कमाते हैं ये मेरा पैसे से थोड़ी जी रहे हैं मेरे पैसे से नहीं रही है जो करते हैं करते हैं ना लेकिन समाज को कैसे आप चेंज करेंगे मेरी फैमिली में कोई अगर मेरे को प्रॉब्लम आती है तो साफ साफ बात बताता हूं मैं आपसे अब वो अनिला जी बोले आप एक्सेप्ट कीजिए देखिए करें अगर कोई होगा तो करना ही पड़ेगा ना एक्सेप्ट लेकिन अड़ोस पड़ोस समाज सब बातें करते हैं वो बड़ा हम आपको पता है टिपिकल समाज में आप इंडियन समाज आपको जानते हैं सुशांत गो है एक मिनट या मैं आप आपने इतनी खूबसूरत बात कही है और आ, मैं आपके आपको इसके लिए दाद देना चाहूँगा बट उसी इन दैट सेम ब्रेथ यू नो आपने कहा कि नहीं समाज क्या वही आपको अनिला जी बोल रही थी कि अगर आप अपने बच्चे को गले लगा के कहेंगे कि ये मेरा बच्चा है दिस इज माई चाइल्ड दिस इज नॉट माई स्ट्रेट चाइल्ड और माई गे चाइल्ड दिस इज माई चाइल्ड जब आप Uh, uh, मतलब uh, uh, दूसरे लोगों को बताएंगे कि इसमें क्या uh, इसमें क्या बुराई है ये बच्चा अब ये जो बच्चे जो पेटिशनर हैं ये आईआईटी में है अब हम और आप तो मत मेर, मेरे बारे में तो आई पर्सनली से मैं तो आईआईटी आई के सपने भी नहीं देख सकता अगर ये हमारी दुनिया हमारे देश को चलाने वाले भी ये बच्चे हैं इनको क्या आप देखेंगे कि ये स्ट्रेट है या गे है या समलैंगिक है, है या कुछ और आप उनके टैलेंट को परखिए जो आपने बोला कि मैं आ, उनको आशीर्वाद लेता हूं उनसे सिग्नल पे जो मांगते हैं उनको अगर आप गले लगा के उनको काम देंगे उनको शिक्षा देंगे उनको एडुकेट करेंगे तो वो उस रस्ते पे नहीं होंगे वो वो भी कॉरपोरेट में काम करेंगे वो भी हमारे इंटरव्यू लेंगे वो भी आपके साथ बैठ के बातचीत कर सकते हैं बट हम उनको अपॉर्चुनिटी नहीं देते तो अगर हम और आप उनको अपॉर्चुनिटी नहीं देंगे तो वो मांगेंगे ही ना और फिर फिर आप बोलेंगे कि तो वही मैं कह रहा हूँ कि आपने इतनी सुंदर बात बोली उसके बाद पता नहीं क्या बोल दिया आपने बट द थिंग इज दैट आपको भी ये समझना चाहिए कि मेरे पिताजी दूसरे रूम में बैठ के मुझे देख रहे हैं उनको मेरे ऊपर बहुत गर्व होता है कि मैं आ, मैं जो भी करता हूँ अब अगर वो वो गवर्नमेंट में काम करते थे अगर वो उनके दोस्तों की बात सुनने लगे उन्होंने सुनी नहीं उन्होंने बोला कि भाई मैं आपके थाट प्रोसेस को मेरे को मेरे को फर्क नहीं पहनता <laughs> मेरे को कहना है कि ये मेरा बेटा है और ये जो yes. भी कर रहा है ही इज अचीविंग वॉट ही हैज टू अचीव वेदर ही स्ट्रेट और गे डजेंट मैटर टू मी जब आप ये कदम लेंगे फिर लो, दूसरे लोग उठ के आपकी बात मान के आप उन वो बोलेंगे कि यादव जी देखो हम हम हमको यादव जी जैसा बनना है या हमको अनिला जी जैसा बनना है यू नो आई थिंक वी हैव टू बी द चेंज दैट वी वॉन्ट टू सी राइट You know, I also want to bring in right now. Uh, uh, Anvesh, Anvesh had said that he had suffered, and this was a question that Surjit Yadav asked. And I do believe that, and the reason why Surjit's voice, so Mr. Yadav's voice, is so important today is because a lot of people at home are asking the same questions that he is asking. They are all asking the same questions. Well, how will I deal with this if it happens in my own home? And these are the questions that people normally ask us. If it is decriminalized, is there a higher likelihood of more of our children becoming gay? which is one question we should answer and sure. it's fair i think it's completely it. fair to answer these questions secondly um, if it is decriminalized yeah. and more people are openly gay will that influence the society and will more people more of our kids turn around and be gay and if and this is the most important question if tomorrow my child turns around and tells me that mom i'm gay how do i handle that situation these are the questions we want to answer but first Anvesh, explain to Mr. Yadav and to our audience what you mean when you say you suffered. 
Why did you suffer? <clears throat> so what I mean when I say I suffered is I've not really suffered discrimination or harassment because I was never uh, out in public. I was always closeted when I was uh, in school or when I was in college or when I was working. Uh, but the suffering was internal in the sense that I was not, I was not sure how my parents would react when I come out to them or how my friends would react when I come out to them because you know like we all know how the society reacts I mean how the society sees us that we are different or that like you said uh, if people may think that once this is decriminalized more people may turn gay this is a misconception that many people have that uh, gay people may turn other people gay this is a misconception and that's, that is how society sees us and this is what uh, is struggle when I say <coughs> that uh, that this society is not ready to accept us, to not ready to see us as who we are, to, to not ready to accept us with the same opportunities that they provide to someone who is straight. Absolutely, and uh, Jerry, I want I want you to answer that question. Um, you know, the fact that people believe that if more uh, individuals were openly gay, would that cause our children to become gay? Will they be influenced by it? Hey, let me. Um, twist that question and ask you, if more people around us are straight, would that make me straight? Would that make the people on this panel straight? Clearly it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked for centuries. It hasn't worked across cultures and it's not going to work the other way around as well. So it's not about how many people around us are straight hmm. or how many people around us are gay that changes who we are as people who are that born. Way. Yes. Yes. yes, I mean you're born that way and I mean whatever influences over time allows you to flourish in a certain way. Um, the way we should look at it is uh, as an issue of whether society allows us to flourish healthily or allows us to or makes us repressed and then therefore makes us into cases of mental health issues. So that's how you should look at it. So when a parent has to deal with a child who is different from them, the parent has to look at how they can make an environment around this child such that the child flourishes and becomes a full human being regardless of whether the child is lesbian, gay, bisexual or of any other gender or her identity. And All right, so here's a question. I'm taking this question to Akhilesh. Akhilesh, uh, obviously, and, and just to spell out to our audience what this discrimination means, imagine a young person, whether boy or girl, who discovers that they are in fact gay, who keeps this secret inside for years and years and years, pretending to be something they're not because they're afraid of what their parents will think, what their friends will think, what their siblings will think. The internal torment actually leads to severe problems psychologically. But Akhilesh, do you believe that will change if Section 377 is removed? Because society is still going to continue to think the way they think. How will that improve the situation? In, uh, I, I think I disagree with you on that because, okay. uh, you know, like I said, the society's perception of what homosexuality is, is like very strongly connected to the law. And if the law says that it's something criminal, illegal or unnatural, as, as the law puts it, obviously there's, no, there's going to be no change. And like you pointed out, uh, about uh, not just about uh, Section 377, but it's also important to acknowledge the fact that almost every single person that I know of in the community has had mental health issues severely only because they were finding it hard to accept themselves and this accepting themselves is harder because of the fact that the society is not able to accept them and now when you have a heteronormative way of life and you know when a uh, uh, when the society looks at you know marriage children and there's an, indeed uh, a lot of pressure on uh, on the individuals to assign meaning to their life so a lot of people do a lot of soul searching which is good in a way uh, but it also leads to a lot of uh, uh, unanswered, questions. unanswered questions, which are very uncomfortable to handle. Right, uh, Sushant, where do you come in? Sushant, and go I ahead. Guess, of course, the, uh, yeah. Sorry, Sushant, go ahead. No, no, complete it, darling. What were you saying? You complete what you have to say. <coughs> he was saying something. He, I cut it. Uh, no, all, uh, all I was saying is... You yeah. can complete what yeah, you no, were no saying. No, no problem. Uh, all I was going to... Con <laughs> Yeah, all I was going to conclude was that uh, uh, indeed it will change because the hope is that society will change and become more accepting. So yes, to answer that question, it's a yes.
Go ahead, Sushant. So, you know, according to me, Faye, uh, you know, social acceptance was not there for so many things that we were, you know, uh, going through. And I really appreciate uh, this young man because he has really hit the nail on the head. But what, what you're trying to also say is also that when you give them, you know, the, the law will be, you know, if it is passed in the favor of the LGBT community, it also then comes to uh, how you kind of sensitize the masses which might not, uh, uh, which have been conditioned in a certain way to um, uh, look at the LGBT community in a certain way for so many years, right? So it's not going to happen overnight. So if you, get, you know, that's, that's the thing that mm -hmm. I wanted to say is that it's not going to happen overnight. But the thing is that are we going to stop uh, sensitizing and uh, doing advocacy programs and you know sensitizing the masses, health organization, edu educational institutions. We are, of course it's a process. Yes, yes. Nothing happens overnight. The thing All is right, that I have, but I have... this is a start. Now the thing is that once you start that dialogue, only once you start that dialogue with the masses, that is when they're going to understand and say, okay, you know what, my God, we have been uh, brainwashed mm -hmm. in a way, we have been conditioned to believe that this is abnormal, <coughs> right? So once you, uh, you kind of uh, show them that it is not abnormal, they will understand it and it is a process. So I think we should give people time. We should not just say, oh my God, he's homophobic, let's not talk to him. No, if he's homophobic, we've seen on your very show the last I time I was there when Jerry was there, you know, a course. very senior uh, member of, uh, you know, the, the, the forces uh, changed his perspective. Now for so many years, he had had a perspective which was, uh, you know, like borderline homophobic, but he came on the show and he said that, you know, I have done my research, I have educated myself and my juniors, my students who work for me, who are the future of tomorrow, just like this boy Avinash and uh, the other one, Animesh, they are the future of tomorrow, we are the future of tomorrow, if we don't, you know, we have to change it and this is how we have to change it, with love, you know, and with open arms. Okay, okay, have I, have, I have one last mask. question before it's I wrap this up and my question is to Harish Ayer. Harish, uh, for parents who are watching right now who are not sure how to react when their children come up to them and say, mom, dad, I'm gay, how is a family to react to that situation? I know that for families it might be difficult many a times when we need to understand that when children come out of the closet the parents also go into a closet but that's why what we are doing in mirror now right now is very important because because this dialogue dialogues are the genesis of change this dialogue that they're watching right now of somebody from BJP somebody from uh, a Hindu party actually coming and saying that they are willing to accept that this exists and we do not <laughs> oppose this and we are willing to learn so it is going to be a learning process I have I have learned myself I uh, I am somebody who had tried committing suicide at one time because of homophobia uh, from that time we I, we have come to a stage where we are speaking about this on national television so we are speaking so that your children don't have to uh, that that no coming out process is a process of struggle and uh, and with shows like these with efforts like these with groundwork like like what different organizations are doing we will build the dialogue and the dialogue will be so strong that parents will never ever say that we do not know about homosexuality so i think what we are doing right now is is the step in the right direction and what 2013 verdict has taught us is that we cannot rest in our laurels even after we get our rights we have to keep at it we have to keep saying that we will uh, respect yes. LGBT people in our midst because only when, only by positive reinforcement can we prevent homophobia and it's right. a continuous so, thing. Mr. Uh, 2013 our rights were taken back and it can be taken back any time. Surjit Yadav uh, of the Hindu Sena, aapne sab ki baat sun li abhi. has that changed your mind in any way? Madam, I can take mind of my mind. I can't take care of ये ये इन इन लोगों का जब भी ये देखिए अभी पार्टी कर रहे हैं आपके टीवी पे दिखा रहे हैं ये नाच रहे हैं गा रहे हैं ये अपनी जिंदगी में मस्त हैं भगवान बहुत अच्छा है ये खुश हैं पर ये ये जो आप देखे जा रहे हैं इनके पास कोई भी चीज ऐसी नहीं है कोई स्लोगन ऐसा नहीं है कि हमको एक्सेप्ट करो या आ, हम भी इंसान हैं ठीक है कोई ऐसी उसमें मेरे को देखने को नहीं मिलता इनकी जो ये वैली है या ये जो आ, निकलते हैं अपना 
सकते हैं लेकिन अगर अगर आपको एक पोस्टर दिखी ऐसे कि हमें एक्सेप्ट करो तो आप एक्सेप्ट करिए हमारे डरना क्या अभी देखिए प्यार किया तो डरना क्या ये तो समाज को वो ठेंगा दिखा रहे प्यार किया तो डरना क्या क्या कर लोगे नहीं 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 आप यादव जी हमारे साथ हमारे रैली में आइए तो आप अपना हाथ बढ़ाइए यादव जी हमारे साथ हमारे रैली में आइए हमारे साथ वक्त बिताइए नहीं नहीं मेरे को प्रॉब्लम नहीं है मेरे को गैस आप नहीं इतनी अच्छी बात कही है आप यादव जी हम आपका वैल्यू करते हैं आप हमसे अलग है फिर भी हम आपका वैल्यू करते हैं जी आपको आपको और हम पिटिशंस भी पढ़नी चाहिए जो भी लिखे हुए हैं जिसमें बहुत अखिलेश को है अखिलेश समाज में अपने आप को प्यार से प्यार से पेश कीजिए प्यार से पेश कीजिए समाज में अच्छी तरीके से पेश करोगे तो होगा हमारा समाज इतना बुरा भी नहीं है एजुकेटेड लोग बहुत हैं ठीक है आगे देखिए क्या होता है हम तो बुढ़े हो गए अब आप जवान हो आपने अनिला सिंह लास्ट वर्ड टू अनिला सिंह यादव जी आप यस पे आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू से वन थिंग टू यादव जी यादव जी अगर हम अपने हिंदुज्म के बारे में बात करते हैं अगर हम अपनी जो भारतीय संस्कृति के विषय में बात करते हैं तो आप देखिए कितने सारे जो मंदिर हैं उनकी कार्विंग्स है वहां पर ये बहुत नेचुरल दिखाया है अगर हम बात करते हैं अपने वेदों की बात करते हैं तो ऋग्वेद में भी ये लिखा हुआ है विकृति एवं प्रकृति यानी जो अननेचुरल है वो वो नेचुरल है उसको नेचुरल बनाने का कार्य जो है इस समाज को करना है तो आपने बात अच्छी कही है मैं इतना केवल कहना चाहती हूं कि 1860 में जो एक नियम बना दिया था आज समय आ गया कि 2018 में हम उसमें बदलाव लेकर आए जिन्होंने बनाया था इंग्लैंड वालों ने ब्रिटिशर्स ने वहां पर भी अब ये लीगलाइज हो गया है मैं केवल इतना कहना चाहती हूं कि आप समाज को भारत को आगे बढ़ाने के कार्य करो आपका सेक्शुअल चॉइस क्या है जब तक कि आप रेप नहीं कर रहे हो आपकी सेक्शुअल चॉइस क्या है मुझे लगता है इतनी स्वतंत्रता तो हमको देनी चाहिए जो इसकी इच्छा रख रहे हैं All right, we're going to wrap up this discussion here, but it simply boils down to one thing. Uh, for Mr. Yadav's benefit, the uh, rally that you are talking about, Mr. Yadav, is called a Pride Rally. There's a reason why it's called a Pride Rally. It's called Pride around the world, because these people are coming out in that rally to say that they are gay, to say that they support the gay. The reason behind that is because so many thousands and lakhs of others live in secrecy. They live in secrecy from their own families. They live in secrecy from their spouses and their children. They live in secrecy from their colleagues. And like Harish Iyer told us, they're driven to suicide. They're driven to substance abuse. They're driven to depression because they're not allowed to be who they want to be. It's simple. It's obvious. It's inevitable that Section 377 will be removed. It's a matter of time before more and more of us can come out into the streets and be openly gay. But in the meantime, we need to prepare ourselves as a society because it's not just about the law. The law is the first step. The courts will show us direction. But as a society, we need to be prepared to welcome the LGBT community into our places of work. into public spaces into cafes into restaurants into schools into colleges into our homes the more gay people you know the easier this will be go out and make friends the solution is as simple as it was when we were in the first standard if you're lonely go out and make friends another word i'd like to put out is that more and more we have gay rights activists and lgbt activists who are men i would love for the women of this community to come out and voice your opinions as well i invite you onto the channel and onto this platform as we continue to talk about this right through the course of this hearing in the supreme court as the supreme court once again in all of its glory and wisdom will decide on our rights and will restore our rights thanks for watching